Good evening and welcome once again to Praying the Psalms through Lent. Each night we're taking a psalm, we're reading it and reflecting upon it and taking that as inspiration for prayer for our lives and for our world at this time. Tonight we're going to be looking together at Psalm 66. So if you have a Bible or a Bible app at home, you may want to open that now or there is a link to tonight's reading uh, along with this video. To begin, as we do each night, we're going to light a candle. And if you have one at home, you can join in lighting yours with me here. And we do this as a very practical way of beginning our time together, reminding ourselves that Jesus, the light of the world, shines in the darkness of our lives. Let's just take a moment to prepare ourselves to come into God's presence. So as I enter prayer now, I pause to be still, to become aware of my breathing, and recenter my scattered and anxious thoughts upon the presence of God. So Father God, as I offer myself to you in this moment, Help me now to turn away from my own small self-centred view of the world and instead to see your view of me and the world around me. I invite you by your Holy Spirit to reshape my soul and to help me respond to the world and the people around me with your love. Amen. I wonder, um, have you ever thought of yourself as beyond God's help? Maybe you've looked at the life of another uh, Christian or a group of Christians and thought, well, God seems to bless them and make them happy, but surely he couldn't do that for me. Well, if that's the case, then tonight's psalm is an invitation uh, to you and to everyone who might think that it's only the exclusive few that God cares about. The unnamed psalmist of Psalm 66, obviously Jewish, uh, and therefore a member of God's first chosen people uh, in history, Israel, uh, then as now a tiny minority of the world's human population, writes an impassioned song uh, to the people of the world, uh, to you and me, inviting us to be included along with Israel in what God is doing in the world. He begins by uh, inviting the world to come and join Israel's joyful celebration and worship of God. Shout for joy to God, all the earth. All the earth here can also be translated all you nations. The people of Israel are the first collective nation of people to discover, if you want, that the meaning of life. It's been revealed to them that the whole world and every human being has been lovingly created by one almighty God. And this psalmist, who, who's of the people of Israel, realises that this is not news that is to be kept exclusively to Israel, to one small group of people. In verse five, he sings, come and see what God has done, his awesome deeds for mankind. And when he paints the image of God's miraculous dividing of the Red Sea, when he says he turned the sea into dry land and they passed through the waters on foot, Come, let us rejoice in him. This is an amazing, inclusive invitation to all of us to see that God's rescuing power is not just for Israel, but for all of mankind. In verse 8, um, the psalmist says to all of us, Praise our God, all you peoples. Let the sound of his praise be heard. And he's in effect saying we're all invited to be able to say of God, he is ours. 
and to praise him for ourselves. Because God wants a personal relationship with every human being he creates. The same God that brought the Israelites through the barrier of the, the Red Sea can also bring us through our obstacles. And that's something worth reflecting on. Knowing and being in a right relationship with God won't remove uh, the obstacles and trouble from our lives. But when we know God in that way, God will and can provide us uh, with a way to go through our troubles when we call upon him. And that's where the psalmist takes us in his last verses. He publicly uh, uh, testifies of, uh, of, of God's love for those who know him. Um, that God doesn't reject him personally when he was in trouble and when he asked for help in prayer. And the implication is that he won't uh, with us either. We can know the same. That's the encouragement for us in this psalm. When we come to God, when we have a relationship with him, we can know his help in trouble. So if you have your uh, Bible or your Bible app to hand, then turn to Psalm 66 with me now and let's read it together. I'm going to be reading it from the NIV, but you can read it in whichever translation you have uh, in front of you. Shout for joy to God, all the earth. Sing the glory of his name. Make his praise glorious. Say to God, how awesome are your deeds. So great is your power that your enemies cringe before you. All the earth bows down to you. They sing praise to you. They sing the praises of your name. Come and see what God has done, his awesome deeds for mankind. He turned the sea into dry land. They passed through the waters on foot. Come, let us rejoice in him. He rules forever by his power. His eyes watch the nations. Let not the rebellious rise up against him. Praise our God, all peoples. Let the sound of his praise be heard. He has preserved our lives and kept our feet from slipping. For you, God, tested us. You refined us like silver. You brought us into prison and laid burdens on our backs. You let people ride over our heads. We went through fire and water. But you brought us to a place of abundance. I will come to your temple with burnt offerings and fulfil my vows to you. Vows my lips promised and my mouth spoke when I was in trouble. I will sacrifice fat animals to you. And an offering of rams, I will offer bulls and goats. Come and hear, all you who fear God, let me tell you what he has done for me. I cried, I cried out to him with my mouth. His praise was on my tongue. If I had cherished sin in my heart, the Lord would not have listened. But God has surely listened and has heard my prayer. Praise be to God who has not rejected my prayer or withheld his love from me. Let's take the inspiration of these words uh, in prayer. Jeremiah uh, once wrote, No longer will they teach their neighbour or say to one another, Know the Lord, because they will all know me, from the least of them to the greatest, declares the Lord. For I will forgive their wickedness and will remember their sins no more. Father God, thank you for these words hinting that Israel was but the beginning of your plan to rescue and restore all who would turn to you. Thank you for Jesus. 
Thank you for him succeeding where Israel failed to be the light for the whole world. Thank you for the inclusive level ground we find at the foot of the cross, from the least to the greatest. All who submit to Jesus, regardless of culture, colour, class, church denomination or country, all of us, male or female, are equally valued and accepted in your family. Father, if we have ever excluded or sidelined side anyone from our fellowship or friendship because of their gender, status, dress or culture not being like ours, please forgive us. Help us to love and welcome anyone and everyone in the way that you love and welcome us. The psalmist reminds us that if I cherish sin in my heart, the Lord will not listen to me. So thank you, Father, for what Jesus has done, that by his death on the cross, I have been saved from the penalty of sin, that daily as I come to him, I am being saved from the power of sin over me. And one glorious day, I will be forever set free from the presence of sin in your new heaven and earth. Thank you that because of Jesus, Heavenly Father, you hear me when I pray. You hear every single person listening to these words right now who will also come to you in Jesus' name. And Father, I pray right now for anyone listening to this who may feel that they have been or maybe still are excluded from your blessing because of who they are or maybe what they have done in life. And I thank you, Lord, that there is no dark depth that we can fall or sink to that you haven't already reached long before us. And that in Jesus, you came all the way down to lift us all the way up. Lord Jesus, you said that you came to seek and to save all those who were lost on the outside. So Lord, I pray that in this moment, anyone who feels lost may hear you calling their name. May they receive your acceptance, your forgiveness and your rescue. And Father, for anyone feeling trapped in life presently, like the beleaguered people of Israel, stuck with a murderous Egyptian army behind them and with no boats to cross a deep sea in front of them, for anyone facing in life at the moment an insurmountable obstacle, may they come to you afresh, maybe tonight, and may you provide and show them a way through their situation. Amen. Now together, let's pray for our world by using the words of this prayer on the screen. O High King of Heaven, have mercy on our land. Revive your church. Send your Holy Spirit for the sake of the lost, the least, and the broken. May your kingdom come to our nation. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Thank you for joining us once again tonight. Please tune in uh, at 7pm tomorrow, tomorrow when we'll be going through Psalm 67 together. But for now, good night and may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit rest upon you now and always. Amen.